Hey guys, are you looking for a personal finance book that will give you everything you need to know to build wealth and give you a solid foundation? Definitely check out this book. So I'm going to share the summary from Smart Women Finish Rich. Now, if you are not a woman, it's totally fine. This book was meant to empower women because back in the day, typically finances were just given to men, right? And because men went out and um, had the job and the women stayed home. And now this does happen still today, which is totally fine. Whatever works for each family is important. But the goal is to empower people anyone to say, hey, this is what you need to know about your finances and this is what you can do to help build financial wealth and to get yourself in a good position. So I'm going to share some of the tips and the lessons from this book. I hope this can be helpful to you. This was the first book that I read and it truly gave me so much information. I hope it can help you too. All right. So the first lesson is to be in control of your finances. Be aware, figure out a plan, figure out what you value, and then you can make a plan from there. And now women, if you are married, that's great. But there actually is a statistic that shows that women have typically 35% less than men in their retirement accounts. So whether you're a male or a female, definitely make sure you are investing in these tax advantage accounts and you're actually being aware and in control of your finances. Also for women, typically you can live a little bit longer than men. You have a longer life expectancy. And so it's very important not to just rely on somebody else or your partner to just take care of everything. And so it's better if you both are on the same page. And so everybody needs to be intentional, whether you're a male or a female and decide, Hey, what do we want for our life? What do we want to do? And then in order to do that, typically you need money. And so that's where you figure out how do we earn um, a certain amount of money? How much money do we need to earn? How are we going to do that? And by what time? What do we want to do in our lives, etc.? And so get on the same page. And my husband and I, we both talk about what our goals are, what we want for our lives. We've figured out what our values are, what we want to do now, but what we want to eventually be able to do. And so knowing that we're able to make a plan and then start from there. If you're trying to figure out what you value, how you want to spend your money, etc., start thinking about what you actually want to do in your day to day. Um, if you want to be able to provide something for someone or donate to a charity, like what are the things you actually want to do daily, weekly, monthly? And that can help you get an idea of how much you might need. But you also might want to ask what's important to you about money or what's important about money? Like, why do we need it? And so this can start simulating some ideas and can help give you clarity on what you want to do moving forward. All right. The next lesson in the book is to get organized. And so figure out where you currently are. So you decided what you want to do, what you want to do with your life, how much money you might need, but where are you currently at? So where, what debt do you have? What income do you have? What liabilities, what assets do you actually have? And then also start documenting everything. So you can make a filing cabinet with this. You could get a three ring binder and start putting in your insurance plans and your um, bank statements and social security statements and liabilities and estate plans and policies all of those things you want to have it organized and so this is just a great tip to do with your everyday life especially if you have a family you want to have your birth certificates and your passports and um, social security information and all of that stuff and so it's just easily accessible and it's there you want to have a nice organized um, place for everything and so this can be really helpful so you want to be organized with your finances it will help you to keep track of it but it will also help you to grow your finances in the long term so it's really important to know what you want, right? We could be aimlessly just going about life and just spending whatever money we want, or we could be doing the opposite and just saving all this money. But then like, why are you doing it, right? And so we want to know our why behind this and what we actually want with our life and also sharing and getting on the same page with a partner or sharing what's going on for you and your financial journey and your goals can really be a valuable strategy and tool. The next topic in this book, there's a ton of information on retirement. And so the author suggests that you want to save at least 12% of your gross annual income into a retirement savings um, every single month and every single paycheck. And so that's your 401k, your 457, your 403b, whatever you have, you really want to try to at least contribute that small percentage. And if you could contribute more, that's great. That's going to set you up even better, or it could help you to be more financially independent and retire early. And so some exercises and some key things to go through is how much do you earn? Do you actually know this? You'd be surprised how many people don't know this. And so what do you actually earn before taxes? How much do you earn after taxes? Do you contribute 
to a retirement account, check that out and figure out how much you do. Also estimate how much you spend. And so figure out, I spend this much a month. And this is a really good exercise to do as well. My husband and I have done this and it is really, really eye opening. It can help you figure out what to do next or where to cut back or where to spend more on. And then you can even take a seven day spending challenge and so, or saving challenge and to see how much are you actually spending. And so for seven days, just track how much you are spending. Um, and then you can also go ahead and cut up some of your credit cards if it's a problem for you. Really just do an inventory of everything in your financial life and then that will help you to make a plan moving forward and to make better decisions. Another little tip is so many people we love to spend, right? Or you want to buy what you wanna buy, but if you're gonna spend more than $100 on something, take a pause and maybe wait 24 hours and see if you still want it. If you do, if it aligns with your budget and your goals, then go ahead. But really just be thoughtful before you spend and take that moment to pause. The next thing the author talks about is having different buckets. And so just like you have different plates in the air, like things that you invest in, meaning your time in your work or your hobbies or your health or your family, things like that. You also want to have a savings basket. One, you want to have a security basket. And so this is where you can save three to four months of living expenses in case of an emergency. And so you also want to have an up-to-date will or a living trust. This was something that was eye-opening to me, especially if you have a family, you want to, if something were heaven forbid to happen to you, you want to have this documentation and this document in place to figure out where the assets go, etc. And then you also want to research and get insurance coverage. And so this is just the security basket to make sure you're secure. Um, number two, you want a savings basket, and this is where you have your retirement savings. And so you don't want to be working the rest of your life, or if you want to work the rest of your life, you want to at least have that choice to, and it's not because you have to. And so leverage the employer matches. That's free money that you get if you are maxing up to a certain amount and then max out your retirement plan as much as you can. This is going to save you money on taxes, but this is also going to ensure that you have enough money when you retire and then invest for growth. So be mindful of your asset allocation to make sure you're trying to grow that money. And then lastly, savings basket number three, you want a dream basket, believe it or not. And so this is where you have money for your dreams, for your goals, for things you want to do. And so make sure you allocate money for it. The author also talks about some mistakes that are common with investing. And so some of the mistakes can be going in ahead and investing before you even know what you want, um, not taking credit card debt seriously and just racking up credit and hurting your credit score and hurting your life and not having extra money to do things, having a 30 year um, home mortgage and not paying it off early, pay, putting off saving for retirement and waiting, building a portfolio that's not diversified and you only have one thing, um, giving up, it takes time to learn and so be patient. And so these are some of the common mistakes do you have any other mistakes that you think? Let me know below. It is more common now in schools to teach personal finance. And I know in Virginia, it's mandatory in high school to ha take a personal finance class, which is awesome. But so many people, and maybe you have not taken a personal finance class. And so it's important to be educated and start reading some of these books and to educate yourself on financial matters. And so you need to learn about the miracle of compound interest. And if you have kids, go ahead and share these concepts with them. It's not too early. And so talk about um, retirement accounts and set up retirement accounts for your kids as soon as they can. You can also set up things like 529s or college savings accounts for them. You also want to start teaching your kids to think like owners instead of shoppers. So we're all just consuming. But instead, how can you think of owning something instead of like, oh, I'm going to be buying this or I want to buy this. What about, I want to own this. I'm going to own this. And then encouraging kids to go for their dreams is another important thing. And lastly, I'm going to leave you with a few tips that they recommend. So don't accept anything less than what you're worth. And so for a job, if you're worth more, or if you've been working the same job and have been improving your skills for a couple of years, you should be making more money and not just a tiny bit of money. You really should consider looking somewhere else if they're not willing to pay you what you're worth. Ask for a raise. Ask how you can earn a raise. This is very, very important to do and to be um, in control of your outcomes and in control of your income. You also, if you don't like your job, like quit, find something better where you're valued. It's okay. And so I know sometimes we just need a job, but be open to trying different things and being open to move and not just staying stuck your whole life. Start your own business. You can build a personal brand. You could have an online presence, live within your means. This is very, very important. Live below your means to make sure that you are saving and investing and you have enough for your future. You want to focus on what makes you unique and to really focus on what your goals are as an individual and then figure out how you can get there. 
All right. So I hope some of these tips were helpful for you. Let me know if you end up reading the book or if you enjoy it. It was at my local library, so it might be for you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and share and subscribe for more. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. You got this.